Depending on where you're at, it's hot and there's no games out. Or is there? Well, I put together some of my personal favorites that came out somewhat recently that maybe you missed out on, just in case you're running low on stuff to play. I have for you a base building survival game with a lot of depth, a solid old school style multiplayer military shooter, an open world RPG that might somewhat fill those Elden Ring withdrawals, and the best card game where you don't play cards at all. Let's get it going. The first game is Outward Definitive Edition, which recently launched on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S, and it also updated its PC version as well. This takes the base open world action RPG Outward, which I actually covered years ago on another Hidden Gems list, and adds new stuff for the Definitive Edition. All of the expansion content is here, and tweaks have been made to better incorporate the newer features into all the older areas, also with some new encounters and graphical improvements. Although Outward can be somewhat rough around the edges in terms of combat, its open exploration, sense of adventure, and just RPG-ness is done quite well. Don't let the lovely purple grass fool you. the world out there is harsh, but it is filled with all kinds of loot to snag and upgrades to be found. To haul all that stuff though, your backpack is the real star of the show here. You'll need to frequently decide when to keep your backpack on, which lets you access all your stuff but with a penalty to your dodge roll, or drop it prior to engaging, which frees you up to be more agile. In Outward, if you fail to come out victorious during a fight, death does not function like most games here. Instead of a game over screen or reloading a save, you're randomly plunked down into a different area of the map, and your quest continues from somewhere completely unexpected. You might get tossed into a prison where you need to work for your freedom, show up in an unexplored cave system, or just wake up in a new town full of strangers. Also, this is one of the few open world RPGs in this style that can be played in split screen or online co-op if you and another person want to adventure throughout the night arguing about backpack management. If you're open to non-AAA role-playing adventures with a focus on player freedom, I recommend giving Outward Definitive Edition a try if you haven't yet. Like many things in life, everything starts with punch and trees. Kepler Earth hit its 1.0 full release on PC and turned out to be a pretty addictive survival RPG. Like Terraria or Starbound, just without the constant jumping, this is a similar style crafting action focused game where hours melt away in an abnormally elusive pace. You start out with just very basic items and structures you can make, but to gain access to the next big tier of upgrades, you'll need to seek out the various bosses in the overworld and underworld. At the beginning, you're only able to make a basic stone club, but as you take down those bosses, you'll then be able to create iron swords to then shotguns, automatic turrets, space-age guns, and eventually high-end robotic weaponry. Advancing your gear power and stats also helps you fend off the swarms of enemies that will periodically invade your map, and sometimes try to take down your base. Destroy their spawning tunnels quickly, and don't let them establish a big old base like I did here. There's also a gene upgrade system to further advance your character, which really incentivizes you to explore even more. This uses certain monster parts you acquire to unlock statistical upgrades that can be socketed onto you. You can even make your own AI companions from scratch that will follow you around and fight for you, if you find enough extra genes to splice into them. This is one of those games where all the progression systems synergize together really well, which is likely why it's so hard to put it down. So that's Kepler Earth. It can be played entirely solo or in online co-op, and both work quite well. We are in the multiplayer shooter era of maps having 97 things raining death from above at all times and active abilities exploding into a confetti chaos of insta-kills. However, do you happen to remember the age of deathmatch-focused military shooters where it was all just about your raw aim and tactics? 
Well, I want to talk just exclusively about Sniper Elite 5's multiplayer component, which stood out the most to me, and I don't see too much chatter about it. The free-for-all and team deathmatch modes have a good mix of close-range automatic firefights and mid-to-long-range snipe-offs. However, if you prefer just your sniper skills against others, there's also a mode that puts a barrier in the middle of the map separating two teams, which turns into an epic long-range base vs base duel. There is a light perk system and weapon attachments which you unlock over time, because of course there is, it's 2022, but your map awareness and aiming proficiency greatly outweigh any kind of advantage you can gain from stuff you assigned in a menu. This good old fashioned early 2000s style of PvP multiplayer is the main hidden gem here, but Sniper Elite 5 also has a full single player campaign, co-op, a wave based survival mode, and invasions if you want to get your Dark Souls on. Sniper Elite 5 is on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and with all those different modes geared to different types of players, something in there will definitely make it worthwhile. I don't particularly enjoy real-life card games too much, however cheating at cards turns out to be much more interesting than the games themselves. You'll be quite prosperous if you ever get wormholed back to the 18th century because Card Shark effectively teaches you sleight of hand trickery, deception, and numerous other ways to cheat the system. The basis of the gameplay revolves around mastering dozens of mini-games, kind of like a more elaborate WarioWare that can lead you to real-life legal trouble. In this, you play as a quiet young lad who travels with a dangerous combination of con artist and magician, who both teach you the ins and outs of their secret trade. You learn to skew certain cards while shuffling to tactically distribute them to your partner, communicate other players' cards across the table with subtle hand gestures, bend cards in different ways to affect the cutting of the deck, and many more unique tricks that you likely didn't even know existed. The longer you take to do these actions, the more the meter at the bottom will rise, indicating that your opponent is onto your shenanigans. Spill some wine while glancing at cards, miscalculate the shuffle, or just get overly zealous with a bet, and the seemingly innocent little paper game might just end in a duel to the death. It's very obvious the team behind Card Shark fully dove into the nitty gritty history of card based cheating. Card Shark ultimately ends up being one of the best card games where you don't play cards, and its interesting journey through the deceitful side of 18th century France makes it worth a look on PC or Nintendo Switch. And those were just some of my personal hidden gem picks from mid-2022 but make sure to check out my other Hidden Gems video from April if you haven't yet, which highlights stuff from the first quarter of the year. If I missed anything that you're passionate about that you feel that no one is talking about, shoot it down in the comments and I'll highlight the best ones. I'm Alex, thanks for checking this out, and good luck avoiding boredom throughout the summer times. I'll see ya.